Well, joining us now in studio to discuss how the BRICS uh, block actually fixes the trading imbalances as the president of the Congress of Trade Unions of South Africa, Mr. Zdumat Lamini, and the BRICS Journal Chief Operating Officer, Africa Mkangala. A very good evening to you, gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining us. Good evening. Let me start with you, perhaps. Uh, how can the BRICS uh, block of nations actually fix some of the imbalances uh, that exist within the countries represented by the block? Yeah, first, uh, thanks and, uh, for inviting us this evening. It, it is worth noting that uh, 10 years ago when uh, the BRICS discussion uh, began to happen, uh, and I think in South Africa we largely uh, were happy and welcomed the idea of uh, an alternative. An alternative to what? To the existing uh, uh, powers that are there, mm. uh, your World Bank, your IMF, and all G7. your G7, America mm -hmm. leading uh, 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 the charge against the working class. But to, to, to bring a new breadth of um, uh, uh, economic scales in South Africa and in, in, in the BRICS uh, countries, wherein uh, you'd have uh, an attitude that says, we can do business, but we can create decent jobs. We can do business, we can employ more people other than a, an, an analogy of high towers of growth of the economy with, which are jobless. Mm -hmm. uh, it will respect the resources of South Africa and Africa will not use Africa for just ripping off the mineral resources. We shall do beneficiation in Africa. Mm -hmm. We shall increase uh, what we can uh, 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 buy from Africa, but refined products of, of, of Africa, so that Africa can create jobs. Uh, ten years later, we are at a state now where we hear there is a, a development bank, which we welcome, and it, it's one step that will take us to the direction of seeing how business people are going to be doing business different from what has been the status quo. Mm. Uh, today, uh, there is this uh, BRICS forum in Africa, in South Africa, which we welcome very well. We are keen and, and, and waiting to hear as, as, work, as workers in South Africa, in Africa, what is going to be the new thing coming with the BRICS, different from the WTO of this world, different from the IMF, which has imposed structural adjustments in countries and keeping them in bondage for many, many years. When this sits and uh, already are told more then 5.1 billion US dollars has been injected into the new bank. We welcome that and indeed are keen to see how it is going to be utilized to relieve countries out of bondage of other countries like America. Mm -hmm. In Africa, just uh, talking about uh, the BRICS bloc, how do the individual members actually maintain their individual goals as countries within that uh, environment or atmosphere of the BRICS sort of collective group? I think the first thing is to always identify what is your skill set and what is your priority as a country. So, for instance, a, a great example is the Fourth Industrial Revolution, which is a key theme uh, in this year's summit. Uh, but all the countries are at different stages of this fourth industrial revolution, with China heading it, uh, India following closely. Um, they've been able to somehow utilize it to develop their manufacturing center uh, or, or, or sector, which has then caused the great growth in their economy while still creating a lot of jobs. Um, so we are at very different stages, and that's where we should then look to partner so that we come back with lessons. But as um, the president of Kasatu <coughs> correctly says, uh, South Africa has its own agenda, its own agenda that's enforced by its own politics. And by politics, we're not referring to the political parties. We're referring to the people of the country and the context within which South Africans uh, uh, occupy this particular piece of land and what we want for ourselves. So when we go and we approach BRICS, we should know distinctly what we'd like to get from Brazil, Russia, China, and India, and what we are willing to offer them back. Mm 
if we are able to set those parameters, mm. the relationship is a cordial, it's a very good relationship. It's a, it's a relationship of brothers and sisters, as we've commonly seen over the years. Now, let me also just welcome another guest, a political analyst, Professor Somadar Dafikin. A very good evening to you, Prof. Thank you for joining us. Now, Prof, uh, just in light of the, the theme for this year's uh, BRICS Summit, uh, BRICS in Africa Collaboration for Inclusive Growth and Shared Prosperity in the Fourth Industrial Revolution, can we actually expect to see um, the entire continent of Africa benefiting from this year's summit? I do think that it will depend on each one of the countries on how they position themselves that they will benefit out of this. Some may be left in the margins and some may benefit in a great way. But we've already seen the infrastructure projects that uh, the African Union has been talking about to say they need assistance to change the whole mindset and the whole infrastructure which was created for both colonial and imperial arrangement from pit to port because most of our infrastructure was meant to service the superpowers, particularly the former colonial powers. Now you can only approach countries which do have a lot of cash like China, which do have these emerging superpowers in economic terms like India to help do those things. But they can only benefit the countries if the countries have a clear strategy have clear national interest because if not, you can only become the victim of this because the bigger powers come with their national interest. This is not a Christmas party. Mm -hmm. Each party comes to say, I can benefit from this and Africa ought to be ready with its own strategy. Uh, Mr. Lamini, there are some uh, members of the BRICS uh, bloc who have been accused of having uh, perhaps very slack or poor uh, labor laws in their countries, uh, exploiting cheap labor. Um, being part of this BRICS, does it, do you think that it might actually uh, you know, encourage the formation of unions in other member states, having you know, more fair labor practices and benefiting even down to the man on the streets and not just the country as a whole? That's correct. You go to Newcastle, you see what the Chinese are doing there. Uh, the worst exploitation of workers in, 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 in their uh, factories in Newcastle. You, you can talk about uh, Brazil. South Africa has become a dumping ground for, 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 the, for, 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 for the chicken there. They, 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 they are dumping uh, uh, here, destroying the local uh, uh, poultry industry here. Uh, you can even talk about India and, and go there and, and see whether they do have decent work. They are the leading uh, country in terms of new technology in China, but mm -hmm. look at the, the, the nature of the jobs that are there. So it's very, very important. But what is key is that uh, as COSATU, and we are going to Deben uh, two days from now, we'll be having our BRICS trade union uh, 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 summit. To, to, to respond and, 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 and prepare ourselves because we don't want a situation where what uh, Prof is saying about uh, those uh, superpowers coming in because South Africa is a gateway into Africa to do exactly what those superpowers have been doing. BRICS has got to be different. And, and as they come here, they've got to look into South Africa as a mirror. When we say this is our case for uh, Newcastle factories that are run by Chinese and Taiwanese, do we want a BRICS that is going to be embracing this or this has got to change? So uh, 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 we, we're coming from that angle uh, as COSA to, and to say, let us do things differently. Remember, we have always said there is an alternative to what the WTOs has been championing, the IMF has been, and we saw an opportunity. Yes, we are not naive to believe that uh, 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 these countries are suddenly socialist countries. They are capitalist countries, and capitalism is the same all over. 
but here in Africa, we have got to engage in our own agenda, as he says. Mm. We've got to be very strict about that. In Africa, let's just talk a bit about the BRICS contingent uh, reserve arrangement. How exactly is that going to work in terms of the different members paying back their loans, especially when uh, the BRICS bloc won't have a universal currency? Everyone will still be using their own currency. How do we regulate you know, all the interest rates and all of those things? Uh, to answer that, what they, they have been doing over the past I think year and a half is they've been de developing methods and one of the solutions to that is um, founding institutions that will then collaborate and, and in one way or form become a, a, a global forum of some sort that allows them to, to then trade. The current, the current facility that they use is the NDB, so the BRICS Bank mm -hmm. is able to accept each country's currency. So they've been encouraging that you bank through or you transact through uh, 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 um, the BRICS bank in order to enhance each, each country's policy. It then moves away from, from everyone using um, uh, either the ruble or, 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 or the, the, the rupee, the or, rand, the rupee, which, whichever one. It, it, should be, it should be a fair system. It should be everyone uh, should be enabled to use whichever system that they decide is beneficial uh, for their own country. Now if I just uh, bring in a prof here, do you think that we should also have a BRICS rating agency instead of, you know, depending on the Moody's and S&P's to rate the, the, the countries that are actually involved in the BRICS block? Yes, that facility can be there if you're having huge lending institutions and investment issues, you need a tool that can advise you whether you can invest there and have returns. In what form could that be? It may come as one of the rating agencies or they may have some kind of due diligence within themselves. And at the same time, as my colleagues have been saying, the shift away from the current system will need a creative rethink of institutions and institutional arrangement to go with that. When you come with a new bank, when you come with a new forum of this nature, it comes with a whole set of things from research, education, standards, up to the rating agencies. It may come even with the forums of trade unions, forums of business and so forth, where they develop norms and standards which may be different from what was taking place because we're beginning to see a shift away or an erosion of the Bradenwood institutions that emerged after the Second World War. That is the World Bank and the IMF. Mm -hmm. Because even those institutions responding to the African crisis in the 80s led to debt, structural adjustment and worsening of situation. But they seem to have a different set of rules responding to the European crisis. Mm. So those kinds of things, uh, the question of a rating agency is one possibility. Yeah. In Africa, just uh, you know, on this talk of perhaps uh, coming up with some global or unified way of dealing with the, the loan system, uh, there are some reports that there's, there are plans to move uh, away from uh, the current monetary structure that actually uses the dollar as a base currency you know, for uh, valuing other currencies. So if, if within the BRICS we're not going to be using the dollar to rate the currencies, which currency then would take that sort of base currency status and how would we decide on that if we don't want to have a BRICS currency? If, if, if we were to choose, we'd be doing exactly what all the other countries have, have been doing, or the superpowers that the president has alluded to. It, it, there's never been anyone who stops and says, why can't we use our own currencies? Mm -hmm. If you know the, the, the exchange rate, what's stopping you from using your own currency? If you travel abroad, you don't have to withdraw money and exchange it uh, to whatever currency of the country that you're at. You can mm -hmm. use your card. So those mechanisms are there, uh, and perhaps to even add, Russia was the first to move on, on the ratings agency. It has launched its own uh, ratings agency, which services both Russia and a lot of the, the countries that are grouped and called SCOs, mm -hmm. that are around Russia, some of the smaller countries. And they've been, I think it's about two years old, they've been using that ratings agency. Um, it, it's so important that each country, though, determines how they input into the, rating, into the ratings agency itself. Mm 
if you look at the model of the BRICS Bank and how it's a fair process, how you have four VPs and one uh, a president. So the president comes from India, or the vice president of operations, finance, um, um, the CEO, mm -hmm. so on and so forth. All of them are, are balanced out. It's a fair process. They, yes, it sits in Shanghai right now, but we have an, an, an African an African um, center right here in Santin. So my assumption would, would be that they would approach it in the same way. And that's why it takes a lot of time. Mm. If you had one country just bullying us and bullying all other four, the ratings agency would long be set up and we'd know exactly which currency they'd be using. But because you have to create the, you have to create the diplomatic uh, um, uh, channels too that then allow for anything to be built on it, uh, it does take a bit of time. Well, I guess that's where we'll leave it, gentlemen. Thank you so much for having joined us this evening. That brings us to the end of our bulletin. Remember that the conversation does continue online, so you can follow us on Twitter. Our handle is at Afro World View. My colleague Harold Bupalam is up next with the Prime Business. From myself and the Prime Time crew, Salangit Sokofetz.